I'm Ella, a rising senior in the class of 2022, and I live in the Washington, D.C. area. Like a lot of you, I bet, I've got several possible career paths in mind, but because of the pandemic, we haven't had our typical career days at school. So it's been pretty hard to learn about what these jobs look like. That's why today I'm super excited to partner with We Work for Health and the STEM Talent Pipeline program to host a virtual career fair, where I get the chance to spotlight jobs from all across the world of science, technology, engineering, art, and math. These are the STEAM careers, as many people call them. What does that mean? Well, I conducted a bunch of virtual interviews with a video game artist, a scientist, an engineer, and others. And today, I'm going to share just the highlights. My first guest is somebody I think you're gonna love. He's helped make movies like Twilight and Black Panther, and now designs a popular video game we've all heard of. Here's my interview with video game texture artist, Justin Holt. So currently I am a, uh, my title is a senior texture artist, and I work at a company called Epic Games and currently working on a game called Fortnite. You might've heard of it. Um, and I've been doing that for about 18 months at this point. And before that I was in visual effects for film and I did that for over 15 years. Yeah, that sounds really cool. Uh, People my age are fascinated with video games and films. So yeah. what kind of education or training did you need to pursue that career? I didn't realize I wanted to do this until probably my junior year of college. I didn't know that there was even a job or career in making, at that point, films. Uh, I got into games, obviously, more, more recently. <clears throat> but at the time, I was actually in school for medicine. I was on oh, my way to becoming a doctor is pre-med. And coincidentally, I had another brother who was going to an art school at the time. And that school actually offered a BFA in visual effects, believe it or not. And he basically said, you know, if this is something you're serious about, maybe you should just, you know, transfer out. All I did know was I did think about movies and games all day. And it, it dawned upon me quite late that maybe it's these things that I think about every day that are things I should be pursuing. And I'm not talking about like, oh, I got to pay bills. I got to do this, you know, the everyday uh, life responsibilities, but you know, your passions and the things that you're, you're constantly fascinating about um, and fantasizing about. Uh, I think those are the things that I realized if I don't do it now, then, you know, when am I going to do it? And not to say that you have to have all the answers when you are coming out of high school, because you don't. I know a lot of people in my industry who some of them didn't actually get started in the industry until they were in their 40s and 50s. Uh, I know one guy who's a phenomenal artist. He was a stockbroker for 30 years and woke up one morning and was like, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore. I want to do art. So he dropped everything, quit his job and went to school. Um, there's another guy I know who worked as a janitor in the facilities of Industrial Light and Magic for years just to get his foot physically in the door to talk to artists because he wanted to be an artist and now he's a supervisor. So there's no set path. Every path is different. Uh, however, I think as long as you're pursuing the things that you think about every day, I think you'll be, you'll be, you'll be fine. Could you tell me about a particularly fun or cool project that you've gotten to work on? Oh man. Um, Thor Ragnarok, Spider-Man Homecoming and Black Man. Those were three that um, were quite a joy to work on. Very grueling schedules, but in the end, the, the work looked amazing. So yeah, that's really cool to hear that you're working on so many things that you know I'm interested in and my peers are interested in. Um, what advice would you give to a student who's interested in the same career? So working in film, there's an idea that it's all glitz and glamour. In fact, when I was in school, a lot of us, that's what we thought. Oh, we're going to work in movies. We're going to this is going to be glamorous, Hollywood actors, sweet. It's going to be great. And then we quickly realized, oh, we got to sit at a desk and a computer for 12 hours a day. It's a lot of, it's a lot of work at a computer. So if you're okay with working on a computer, then it, it, that's the first good sign that you might be interested in doing some stuff. Um, and the next thing I would do is just do some online research for uh, any kind of introduction to whatever you want to do. There's a plethora of resources online you can find a wealth of knowledge and very quickly kind of get an idea of mm, this is something that i'm really interested in or yeah that sounds really scary and confusing i, I don't want to do that my next guest is scientist Dinara simmons 
She works in a lab every day to produce the innovative medicines and treatments that all of us depend on, especially as we continue the fight against COVID-19. Miss Simmons has some great stories to share about how she ended up working in a field that she's always loved. Next up, senior scientist, Dinara Simmons. So I test the activity and potency of um, biologics and small molecules, basically test the activity of medicines. I always knew I wanted to go into uh, science and medicine. People go into science because they want to help people. You know, some people become doctors because they want to help people. Some people make medicines because they want to make good medicines to help people. You know, it's all about helping people. And everyone is doing that. But when you start actually start speaking to people that have taken the medicines and they're like coming back and saying thank you, you know, the doctor said I had four months to live, and now that was three years ago, and you feel so touched, and it makes you feel like the reason why you went into the field, it, it, it actually is happening, and you feel really, really good. It's, a, it's an awesome feeling. Yeah, I mean, that sounds amazing to know that your work is, you know, helping people's lives, saving their lives. Yeah, because you, I mean, you you know your work is helping people because like, you know, medicines do help people. But when the people actually come and like tell their story it is so touching. It's so, it's a undescribable feeling, but it makes you feel so proud and it makes you want to work even harder. So have you worked on any particularly fun or cool projects? I did have um and it, a paper was published. I was on the paper. Some of the biologics were uh, sent to space and some experiments were done in space and then they brought it back down and I got to test it. And so that was pretty awesome because it was like, oh my gosh, this has been in space. Let's see how it works. Let's see if it still works, if there's any differences. And that day I was like, I'm working on material from space. That's pretty cool. Has you know the typical workday or your job in general been impacted in the last year with COVID? Yes. So we are actually very much impacted because all the reagents that we order and to, to do our experiments, they're, they're not available. So it's the same thing in the labs. There's a shortage on everything to try to do your work. So it's, it's, it's a challenge to, to, get, your, um, to get the equipment to, to, do the, to do the work right now. If students like me are interested in pursuing the same career as you in the field of medicine and you know what advice would you give if you're interested in medicine and you know any stem careers i would say finding someone in that area on everything is online and and looking at what they did to get to that area of course there in the future things will be different but you can see a path there will always be detractors or people like questioning you so you can't like give that energy if that makes any sense you just have to stay focused on what you like and follow your your feeling and your interest if it feels good to you you continue my next guest is dr tom krieger if the virtual background of his favorite hobby doesn't give it away dr krieger is someone who loves to work hard and play hard he has a lot to share about a career in the skilled labor force here we go with dr tom krieger I supervise training for the building trades unions. Those are the construction, uh, construction and building unions uh, across the United States and Canada. And one of the most fun parts of the what I do is I recruit people. I we have a program to recruit more women, uh, people of color, and veterans, uh, returning citizens, folks coming out of prison into the construction industry. You know, there's a there's a great. Uh, I think pressure upon kids in schools and today to, you know, you can, you're in eighth grade, you got to pick a, you know, pick a career and, and, and stick with it and, you know, and specialize in all of that. I, I don't think that's as important. I think get you know, just having good skills coming out, good reading skills, reading comprehension um, to be able to analyze a bunch of documents and figure out what the main point is and to have good math skills and that. So I think what's benefited me across my career is that I'm a jack of all trades. I don't, I'm not really specialized in one thing and how that benefits me in my job today. As I mentioned before, I do a lot of different things during the day. So I have to, you know, I have to, I have to draw upon different parts of my brain. Um, and I think that's an important thing for, for kids today. You know, don't feel that you have to really specialize and go into one career um, because, you know, it, you want to be good at everything you do and that will help you in your career. So, the next question I was going to ask is why should kids consider working in STEM? I don't think people really understand 
construction apprenticeship and, and the, the opportunities it affords. We're one of the last places, I think, and some kids get, you know, lucky. They may, be, they may be really smart and go into computers and they make a lot of money and all that or advertising or whatever it is. But um, we also want the really smart kids who are good in STEM, who have some science, some technology, some uh, 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 knowledge and, and aptitude for mechanical ability, things like that, who are good in, you know, math um, and, 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 you know, the across, broadly across the STEM fields. Because you can go into a construction apprenticeship today as a young person, as I said, get a full-time job, no student loans, no student debt, because we're not going to charge you for that education. You're going to work, and, and for the first three to five years you work, your, 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 your hourly wage is going to go up. You're going to get full benefits, the whole thing, and we're going to train you on nights and weekends for no cost. And at the end, you know, you can make seventy-five, a hundred thousand dollars a year. Really good family supporting, you know, middle class wage. You're going to be able to buy cars and trucks. You're going to be able to take vacations. You're going to be able to buy a home. All those, you know, the American dream, right? This is a job that can allow you to fully participate in the American dream. But you need to have that foundation, and that's why I'm here today. And that foundation is reading comprehension, science. You got to pay attention in school, and particularly in math. Pay attention to math because that's going to give you the skills that will open those doors for you. So if there's one thing in life that I would like to see go away, it's this idea that when students are getting, you know, thinking about graduating from high school or they're going to graduate from high school, they're always presented with this with this choice. And it's a false choice where you've got to go to college or you go to work. If you go to work for us, if you go to work in the building trades and you become an apprentice, you're also going to get college credits. And some of our unions are going to get, you know, most of the college credits you could get for an associate's degree as part of your apprenticeship training. So you can get those things transcripted and, you know, and then you, you, you get, you, you become a journey level worker. That's when you finish your apprenticeship, but you also get an associate's degree. You can get a bachelor. We have bachelor's degree programs with scholarships in construction. Again, we want to have the best trained workforce and the most diverse workforce in the country, in the world, really, in construction. And we want to have the most educated workforce as well. We want folks with college degrees and who, you know, know their trade the best. My next guest has a diverse background in nutrition and health. Her determination and passion for helping people really stood out to me. Here's what Ms. Hernandez Cano had to share about her career. I am a registered and licensed nutritionist dietitian um, for over 25 years now. Um, I work in private practice at the moment, and I also food engineer, which means I create products. Thank you. I mean, that's super cool to hear about how there are so many different areas in the field of nutrition. And that actually makes me wonder, could you summarize briefly what a typical workday looks like for you? So um, I make my hours, which is a lot of fun. And so once I um, welcome my patient, I weigh them. I have a weight room and I have these really cool scales that measure muscle mass and the arms, the legs, the torso, also measure visceral fat, which is the fat around the liver, the main organs. I create a report. Um, I capture their labs. Uh, so we sit down in another office um, in a very relaxed, very beautiful, um, calming environment. And we begin to talk. I usually uh, spend an hour with my patients. My first question to them is always, how are you? How's your life? How are things going? It's not about the weight and it's not about the numbers. It's about a connection. This made me think about how I'm a student in high school and my peers and I were beginning to think about what we want to do after high school, go to college, and what career we want to pursue. Could you please briefly explain why kids should consider working in STEM like you? We are so blessed um, to be in this country and to have the opportunity to study whatever it is that we want to study. It is an incredible opportunity to explore what career uh, and explore also yourself and know about yourself and you know what kind of person are you, you know, and what kind of person do you want to um, sort of become? It's important that if you are a people person, that you find a career that is with people, that is with sharing 
Um, if you're shy, but you want to explore that avenue, um, I think that, you know, you should put yourself in positions where you actually, you know, can explore that. I, I hear a lot of people, you know, say, oh, I have to choose between careers. And I'm like, listen, if you're in high school and you find that you love, you know, two different careers, start, you know, early, get into the dual enrollment programs, get into the, you know, the, the advanced courses where you can graduate from high school having, as I did, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, credits so that you can have two careers. You know, I commend um, this fantastic, beautiful program that you guys have going. And, and I think that um, it's going to change many lives for the better. I want to say a big thank you to all of the guests we heard from today. I learned a lot about different STEAM career paths myself and have lots of things to think about. I hope you do too. On behalf of We Work for Health and the STEM Talent Pipeline Program, this is Ella signing out.